Hi, I'm the Bachelor Farmer Cook and welcome to our holiday special. I'm going to share with you tonight one of my favorite recipes and although it doesn't appear, well, I'll be honest, it's not a traditional recipe for this type of a holiday season. What it is, is a really good alternative to all of the traditional things that everybody's going to be having. If you've got a lot of company coming over, or if you're just getting a little tired of the fudge brownies on top of glazed ham and mashed potatoes, this is a good alternative, and if you need to feed an entire house full of family on a lunch before the big day, this is a good recipe to go with. This is one of my favorite dishes. It's Bourbon Street Chicken. Come on, let's do some cooking. Now, Bourbon Street Chicken is one of my favorite dishes that has kind of disappeared, so I had to figure out from my memories of what it tasted like on how to make it again, which is why I'm so excited to share it with you. Now what we want to do is we want to start with two pounds of chicken thigh. Now you can use either chicken breast or chicken thigh. I prefer thigh because it has a bit more of the fatty acids and the fat that is just that flavor. So let's get started. What you want to do is you want to grab your chicken thigh. We're going to stick it on the board. First thing we want to do is trim the surface fat as much as we can. Now don't worry about that. There's enough fat inside the muscles to where you don't need the extra fat that's on the surface. So go ahead and trim as much of that as you possibly can. Now with the boneless thighs, you have to take a look and you can see you've got one big piece, one smaller piece. Let's go ahead and separate those straight down the bottom. Let's flip the bigger piece over and you can see these kind of dangly bits. Let's go ahead and separate those because what we want to do is we're going to cut these pieces into strips. So any of the dangly pieces on the bottom you can get, go ahead and cut off. Now let's flip it back over. We're looking for our straight lines. Let's look for our parallel lines and we want to go ahead and cut against the grain into about half inch strips. Now let's take that little piece and again we're going to do the same thing. Look for our straight line, cut across the grain, and then let's continue doing that for the rest of the package of thighs. All right, I've got our chicken thighs prepared. Uh, I went ahead and took a moment to prepare all of the rest of my ingredients. I've got my ginger minced. I've got my garlic minced, um, got my salt and pepper flakes, even got my garnishments out here, water chestnuts, everything I need for the sauce, even the bell peppers. We're ready to start cooking now. All right, so bring your pan up to a medium high heat. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cook the chicken thigh meat first. There's a couple of things to remember about this. First of all, you wanna use a vegetable oil, not an olive oil. Now, an olive oil has a flavor that you don't want to add to this dish because of the richness of the sauce itself. The olive oil would get in the way. Also, since we're using a medium and high heat, not only will a vegetable oil be a little more neutral, it will also not smoke, possibly. So let's get our tablespoon out, or if you're a cook, just eyeball it. We should at this point in time know exactly what two tablespoons look like. It looks like kind of about that much. Now we're going to go ahead and get our chicken in here and get it to start cooking. At the very beginning, you want to keep it moving. Because until it has that oil coated over it, it's going to want to stick down to the bottom. But after a few minutes or so, once it gets enough oil on the pieces, it'll stop sticking to the bottom and it'll just start cooking clean through. And what we're looking for is to cook it completely, 160 degrees inside temperature. 
But there's one other thing that you want to remember when cooking thigh meat as opposed to breast meat. The thighs have a dense muscle that has several layers on it. So while we're frying this, we want to go ahead and get another spoon. And while it's cooking, okay, there we go. See, the high heat flash, it's not sticking anymore. Everything's got a nice coat of oil to it. Now it's okay if it sticks to the bottom of the pan a little bit because that's just flavor for when we do the sauce later on. But now that it's, it's done sticking to the bottom, now it's just, it's just going to start cooking clean through. Now those dense layers of muscle on the thighs, they're going to start looking like two or three layers of pieces on the same piece. So you want to get another spoon out and you want to separate those pieces too. This is much easier to do while they're cooking than to try and do during prep. Now this is going to take a minute or two so feel free to grab your refreshing drink. We're going to go ahead and get this thigh meat cooked completely clean through and we'll come back to you in just a minute for the next step. Okay, our chicken is cooked and it's up to 160 degrees. It's at the right temperature. We're gonna go ahead and lower our pan down just a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and remove the lid. Now we wanna go ahead and remove our chicken now. We'll add it back in after we make the sauce. So, we wanna use a slotted spoon. Get my wooden spoons out of the way. Get my measuring cup in. And we want to just scoop it out and we want to leave as much of that water and flavorful fatty stuff in the pan. And I'll show you why in just a moment here. So we're going to go ahead and remove our chicken and set it aside. Now as you remove the chicken you're going to notice that you probably have some fried bits on the bottom from when we first threw all of the chicken in on the hot pan. That's okay, you wanna save it there. That's flavor, it's gonna to add to the sauce as we're working here. All right, I've got my chicken removed. And now I'm gonna go ahead and save the liquid that's in the pan because that's where all the flavor is. And now we're gonna start working on the sauce. Let's reduce our heat to about a medium low. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our most fragrant spices and we're gonna go ahead and flour them in the pan. That means we're gonna stick them in the hot pan, let them kind of melt and sizzle out. Now, according to the recipe, we've got four teaspoons of garlic, one of ginger. Those are the two that we wanna start with because those are our most pulpy. Now we get our old fancy, fancy teaspoon. One, two, three, four. Oops. Yeah, I know. A little extra never hurt. And then our ginger. A little extra doesn't hurt. We're going to get our wooden spoon back, we're going to spread that out a bit and just let those fragrances just kind of flower out in the pot. The heat will start melting it down and separating it and you'll get a really nice smell out of it. Now the next thing is we've got a half teaspoon of pepper flake and again you want to put that in the naked pan as well because that's going to help not too much crushed pepper. That can make it really, really spicy. Just a touch for a little bit of kick. All right, now we're going to move on to ah, brown sugar. Now bourbon chicken is a very sweet dish, but it has an oriental tang to it. 
which uh, you'll see in a few minutes here. But most of all, it's a very, very sweet sort of dish. And we want, let's see, two thirds cup. Now that's a very sort of odd measurement, isn't it? Two thirds of a cup. Now normally I would haul out my beer cans and all that sort of stuff, but mom and dad have these great things and I'm just gonna take advantage of them right now. So I've got one third cup. You wanna go ahead and pack that in. That's one. And that's two. Now by adding these ingredients first, the heat is gonna let sort of the flavor come out of the actual ingredients themselves. It's also gonna get a head start on getting the sugar melted. But you don't wanna leave it on there too much because you don't wanna burn or scald the sugar. So we need to start adding our liquids now. Now, our liquids are gonna start with a half cup of apple cider. Got our apple cider here. Good old fashioned hillbilly jug. All right. Now there we go. Now we've stopped the pan from sizzling. We're not gonna burn anything there. Next up, for a bit of the tangy bite, we're gonna do the apple cider vinegar. This, this is what gives it the tang on top of the sweet. Now, recipe says two tablespoons. Let me get my tablespoon out. Unos. Dos. Give that a nice stir. Our sizzling has stopped. Our brown sugar is melting. Ooh, you can smell the fragrance of the ginger and the garlic. Now we're gonna add our soy sauce. And again, this is an odd measurement. It's two thirds cups, which is why I kind of bailed on my beer cans and went for Ma and Pa's. this takes too long, feel free to cut the top off. And a touch extra just for good measure. Now comes the very controversial ingredient that everybody hates to see in their authentic food, but it's actually important for this recipe. Little bit of ketchup. Now ketchup not only has a touch of the tomato paste, it has an extra sugar that helps to counterbalance and mix with the brown sugar also. So we're gonna add a little bit of our ketchup. And that's gonna be this little tiny boy here. Oops, excuse me. And as usual in cooking, ketchup never wants to come out. You gotta get your finger in there and mix it in. All right, now normally on this recipe, you would wanna thin it out a little bit with water, but I've saved the drippings from when we did cooking. And remember what I said? Pure flavoring. Now we wanna add a cup of water, but we have a half cup of our natural thigh meat broth. So we're gonna add that and a half cup of water. This is the bourbon chicken sauce. 
And we're gonna go ahead and stir that and get it combined. And once we have it nicely combined, we're gonna wanna turn up, turn up the heat just a little bit. Okay, we've had our sauce simmering and now it's just come to a boil. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and lower that heat for a second. We don't want the sauce to boil for too long, but we do want it to come up to a boil just momentarily so that everything combines really well and we know that that sugar is melted. Oh, we got a really good looking sauce here. Now, what we wanna do at this point in time is we wanna separate about half of the sauce for garnishment. Um, and then the rest of the sauce, we'll put the chicken back in and let it coat and turn into a nice glaze. So let me get my handy helpers over here. And I'm gonna eyeball about half of the sauce back into my measuring bowl. Now I want to add the chicken back in. And remember, I lowered the heat just while I was in this transition period. We'll put that heat back up in just a moment in order for the chicken to glaze. But at this point in time, we want to add our veggies. We're going to add our water chestnuts. And we're going to add our bell peppers. And we want to take a nice moment here, get a good combination. Don't worry if you accidentally dumped out too much of the sauce, you can always add the sauce back in. But it looks like we've got a good consistency here. Now you want the sauce to about halfway cover everything in your pot. taking a little too much out. I'm going to add just a touch back in. Now we're going to cover. We're going to leave this on a medium heat because we want it to start subtly boiling again and start glazing on our vegetables, our water chestnuts, and the chicken. Now the main reason we separate some of the sauce is so that we can use it during garnishment. Now the sauce will make a nice glaze over the chicken and the vegetables, but that usually doesn't leave anything left for the rice. So when you garnish it, when you plate it, you wanna have a little extra sauce on the edge so that you can put it on the top and it makes it glisten, but also you get some of that sauce down into your white rice as well. So we're gonna go ahead and let this cook for a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and make white rice. Now rice is what's known as a two to one ratio. So you have one cup of rice and then two cups of water, but that is handy for sticky rice. You wanna add a little bit of vegetable oil, just a pinch of salt, and you wanna go ahead and mix that up first. You want to get as much of that oil on all the rice kernels as you possibly can. That will make for good rice, not sticky rice. So give that a nice good stir. Bang, 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 bang on it. Now we're going to add our water. Now give that a good stir because sometimes pouring the water in will push all of the rice into the corners and it'll clump. Now we're going to turn this up to high. You want to wait until you just barely see it boiling. You want to go ahead and put the top on it. Reduce that heat down to low. Set your timer for about 9 to 10 minutes. 
when the rice is done, you can take the top off. If it looks like all the water is dissipated, then it is finished. You can take your spoon, dig it down to the bottom, make sure it's finished all the way through. Now that's our first layer. We've got our second layer, the chicken over here glazing up nice and pretty. We've got our third layer with the garnishments ready. We'll see you at the dinner table. Okay, now we've got it all nice and plated. Rice on the bottom, our chicken on top. Yes, this is basically just a chicken and rice dish with a really excellent sauce. Now, we separated some of the sauce earlier so that we could stick it back on top, not only to let that chicken glisten just a little bit, but also so that that flavoring gets down into the rice as well. We garnish it with a little bit of green onions and toasted cashews. And now about the bourbon. Now Bourbon Street Chicken actually doesn't have any bourbon in it. It was created by a chef that worked in New Orleans, Louisiana. He designed this dish as a tasty little light luncheon fare. But there is no bourbon. But there is now. See, isn't that better? Enjoy. Happy holidays from my family to your family. Let's all enjoy. Be good. Be good at it. And let's eat. We'll see you next time. Ah. Uh -huh.